Now we present Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X, the Saturday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama, brought to you by Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you what every smoker wants, mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste, the cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. By the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. <laughs> Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. Hey, wait, listen to this. Now here's Chesterfield's answer to Cyrano de Bergerac, Bob Hope. I'd top you easy, Dad, but we only have a minute here to sell Chesterfield. Okay, well, let's get to it. Better tasting Chesterfield is the only cigarette that combines for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. Mm, the mildness is a cinch to prove. You just make the Chesterfield mildness test. You know, open a pack and enjoy that milder aroma. Then smoke them, and you'll know that Chesterfields are milder. And Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That fact has been confirmed by the country's first and only cigarette taste panel. So make our cigarette your cigarette. The reasons go together like this. Chesterfield, Chesterfield, always takes first place. That milder, mild tobacco never leaves an aftertaste. Oh, ho, open a pack and give them a smell. Then you'll smoke them. Under the flat silver glare of a full moon, the California desert is a lonely, burned-out wasteland without a sign of human habitation. But in a dense clump of mesquite and chaparral, two men crouch silent and hidden, watching as a two-engine transport plane lands in the midst of this utter desolation. Hear them, Thurston? They're Mexican nationals, all right. Okay, Kitty. Give the signal. Let's get out there. Check. All right out there. Stand still and nobody will get hurt. You're surrounded by men of the United States Immigration Service, so just stay where you are and we'll be... Look out, Kitty. The plane, Thurston. The pilot's getting away. That's right. Good. You heading back to New York now? No rush, Chief. I think I'll stay out west for a little while. But why, Ken? For just a routine thing? Another bunch of Mexican nationals picked up for attempting illegal entry? Chief, did you ever hear of Fedor Colenda? Fedor Colenda? Yeah. Sure. During the war, he was one of the biggest international agents in the business. He was also one of the passengers aboard that plane. What? That's right. He's the fourth big-time alien agent we picked up in the past 60 days. Illegal entry, all of them. How many more have gotten in without it being spotted, we don't know. But I have a hunch we're being flooded with them. Well, if you're right, Ken, we've got to put a stop to it. Right. Now, Colenda's in the hospital at Blythe with a bullet in his shoulder. He's in no condition to talk, even if he wanted to. But he had a telegram in his pocket that may give us a lead. Well, what did it say? It confirmed a reservation he'd made for a vacation. Vacation? Where? At the Flying Mustang, a dude ranch in Helena, Montana. <laughs> The Flying Mustang? Sure, sure, I know where it is, stranger. About a hundred miles from here as the crow flies. But it'll take two days easy by car. Ten by pack mule. Uh, what about flying in? Well, you maybe got a point there, stranger, if you ain't afraid of them mountains, that is. Pretty dang high, them mountains. I heard of fellas who were once... Is plane ready yet, Zeke? Oh, howdy, Miss Doris. Yep, gassed up, checked out, and all ready to skedaddle. Thanks, Zeke. Uh, oh, say, before you go, Miss Doris, the fella here been asking about the flying Mustang. Seems he's trying to figure how to get out there. Yes, 
You the man Zeke's talking about, mister? Maybe. What's your interest in getting to the Flying Mustang? Well, that comes out of the heading of private business, doesn't it? It's my business, too, mister. Oh, why? 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 Because she's Doris Crandall's stranger. She owns the outfit, that's why. And I'm asking, mister, what's your interest in getting out there? You're not very cordial to your guests, are you, Miss Crandall? Who are you? My name's Ken Thurston. We're full up, Mr. Thurston. Better wire for reservations the next time. Maybe sometime next fall. Would Fedor Kalenda have to wait that long? What's Kalenda got to do with this? His vacation plans have been uh, interrupted, and I thought I might be able to take his reservation. Zeke? Yep, Miss Doris. Tell the boys at traffic control that I'm changing my flight papers. I'll be carrying a passenger. Flying Mustang. Thanks, Miss Crandall. Nice landing strip. Couple of good sized hangers. Looks like you handle a lot of traffic here at the Flying Mustang. Running a cattle outfit, even a dude ranch, is big business these days. And in big business, the airplanes replaced the horse. Or haven't you heard? Oh, well, not being a ranch, I'll have to take your word for that. My handyman's riding up. He'll take you to your bunkhouse. When you get your gear stowed away, come up to the ranch house and meet the other guests. See you later. Yes, yeah, see you later, Miss Crandall. Howdy, stranger. Howdy. Welcome on board the Flying Mustang. What the... Putsy. That's right, Mr. X. Ah, uh, oh, long time no see. Huh? What the devil are you doing here? I thought you were in Mexico City. Oh, I was, I was. But this Senor Rocas flew me up here and got me this job with that luscious Doris Crandall. Who's Senor Rocas? Oh, a, a big hotshot cattleman from Argentina. He's the guy I heard talk about smuggling in the Mexicans when I called you and the chief about it. Huh? Believe me, Mr. X, I'm plenty glad you showed up. There's something screwy going on this ranch place. Like what, Putsy? Yeah, we like what, Putsy? Oh, 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 it's you, Mr. Sanders. You were saying there's something screwy about the flying Mustang, Putsy. Like what? <laughs> I didn't mean exactly screwy, exactly. <laughs> oh, 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 Mr. Thurston, this is Mr. Bert Sanders. He's the big shot in charge around here. That means I'm foreman of the spread, Thurston. And any information you want about the outfit, you can get from me. Not from any cookhouse waddy who's been pasturing on local weed. What's the matter, Sanders? Has the flying Mustang got something to hide? Look, mister... Maybe you're here for a vacation. Maybe you're mixed up with some of that business going on at the ranch house. But whatever it is, let's get one thing straight. As long as I'm foreman here, I'm running the way, things the way I see them. That goes for you and all the rest of the... <laughs> oh, Mr. Thurston. Mr. Sanders. Stop worrying, Thurston. Just a couple of the boys leveling their sights on some coyotes. For a cattleman, Sanders, you've got a bad sense of direction. Unless your boys are shooting coyotes in the ranch house. <laughs> Senor Thurston, Martini. Perhaps it will make restitution for the way Madeline and I startled you. Oh, well, uh, After all, Mr. Thurston, we must have a drink to our newly formed acquaintanceship. All being dudes together? Sure, Miss Trent. A martini it'll be. Uh -huh. uh, bueno, bueno. You, Senor Sanders? I don't drink during working hours, Mr. Rocas. As you wish. And I still think there's something mighty funny about those shots. I thought we had explained it, Mr. Sanders. Julio was boasting of his ability with a revolver. I asked him to prove it. He did, by firing at a target out the window. If you have any other comments, I suggest you make them to Miss Crandall. Your horse is saddled and ready, Miss Trent. I'll be at the corral any time you want to take that ride. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. You're very sweet. But you needn't wait for me. I'm going to try to persuade Mr. Thurston to ride with me instead. Well, Mr. Thurston, will you accept my invitation? Be glad to, Miss Trent. Oh, good. 
I'll be changed and ready in 15 minutes. Right. Yeah, she's a wonderful woman, Madeleine. Wonderful. Too rich, too bored, too willful, but wonderful. <laughs> you know that drink? Not just now, thanks, no. Tell me, Senor Wilkers, where are the other guests? Other guests? Oh, but there are none, my dear friend. Uh, we uh, three have the flying Mustang to ourselves. Oh? You are surprised at this? Well, a little. Just as you were surprised to find your friend Putsi at the ranch? Ah. Uh. Ah, <laughs> see. I find him a most amusing person and most informative. Uh, tell me, did you manage to capture those Mexican nationals who attempted to cross the border? We did, yes. Ah, bueno, bueno. You're happy about it? Oh, but of course. Was it not I who learned of the plot in Mexico City and told Putsi of it? And now you and I meet here at the rancho in Montana. <laughs> Strange coincidence, eh, senor? Is it? <laughs> you know, Thurston, I am most intrigued with this idea of smuggling people over the border. Perhaps you would care to exchange information with me later at your bunkhouse. I'll be there. Bueno, bueno. I would not miss this opportunity for anything, Senor X. <laughs> oh, enough, Ken, enough. Oh, uh, oh you come oh. Tired, Madeline? <laughs> oh, no, Ken. I could ride like that for hours. But we're nearly back at the ranch house. And my main purpose in coming out here was to talk. What about? A friend of yours, Fedor Colenda. What do you know about Colenda? Oh, I met him once, casually, before the war, at an embassy ball in Budapest. What makes you think he's a friend of mine? Well, Doris Crandall told me you'd assumed his reservation. Frankly, I was a little surprised to learn he was in the country. I thought he was in disfavor with the government. Yeah. Tell me a couple of things, Madeline. Of course, Ken. You and Rokos were the only guests at the ranch when I arrived, but at first Miss Crandall said there wasn't room for anyone else. Any idea why? No. Except that Doris is a rather peculiar girl. Any other questions? Yeah, that shooting episode in the ranch house, what really happened there? You didn't believe my story to Sanders. I might have. If Rokos didn't have powder burns on the shoulder of his jacket... Powder burn? Yep. Yeah. Rokus wasn't shooting at anything. He was the target. Oh. If you knew Julio better, you, you'd realize how ridiculous that statement is. My darling, he hasn't an enemy in the world. Mr. Thurston! You who, Mr. Thurston? Oh, boy, oh, boy, am I glad I found you. You've got to do something, Mr. Thurston. You've got to do something. What's wrong? Somebody's been shooting at coyotes again. That's what's wrong. What? And they got him, too, right in your bunkhouse, Senor Rocas. Julio? What's happened to him? He is murdered, killed, oh. even dead, maybe. Oh, blood all over. <laughs> We will continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. When we ask you to try Anison for the relief of pain due to a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, we're not asking you to try a new or unproved method. For there are many people listening in now who have been introduced to Anison tablets by their own dentist or physician. You who have received Anison this way know the effective, incredibly fast relief these tablets bring. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is... Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. People by the thousands are using modern Anison today instead of other ways. Doesn't their experience seem worth following? Try Anison the next time you suffer pains from headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. You will be delighted with the results. Ask your druggist for Anison today. Anison is spelled A-N-A-C-I-N. Now, Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Uh, 
Attempting to track down a well-organized effort to smuggle alien agents into the country, Ken Thurston finds himself at the Flying Mustang, a dude ranch near Helena, Montana. Right now, Ken, the beautiful Madeleine Trent, and Putsy are entering the bunkhouse, where Putsy claims to have found the murdered body of Julio Rocas. You... you see what I mean, Mr. Thurston? Yeah. What... what was it, Ken? Whoever shot at him this time didn't miss. Who else knows about this, Putsy? Oh, nobody. Where's Sanders? He, he said he was going hunting for, for, for snipes or something. And Doris Cranwell? Oh, the last I seen of her, she was, she was going into the airplane garage. The hangars? Yeah. What would Doris be doing there at this time? Ken. Yeah. There's your answer, Madeline. Looks like Doris is taking a little trip. That's it, Chief. Will you get the reports back to me as fast as you can? Right, Ken. Now, I've got some hot news for you. I got a call from Keating of immigration. He went into the hospital at Blythe early this morning to question Fedor Kalenda. Did he find out anything? I'll say he did. He found out that... Hello. Chief, can you hear me? Chief! Uh... What, what, what's the matter, Mr. Thurston? I think somebody just cut the phone wire, Putsy. Oh, that's all it... it huh? Cut the phone wire? That's right. Hey, I, I don't get it, Mr. X. Well, what's going on this ranch place anyways? Cutting phone wires, murdering people. And why would anybody want to bump out that Rokas character anyway? The usual reason, he knew too much. Knew too much about what? Smuggling aliens into the country. Huh? I have an idea he was going to tell me about it when I got back from that ride. Oh. Somebody else must have thought so, too. Hey, hey, what if that somebody thinks I know something... It's a possibility. Well, don't just stand there. Call the police. Call the... Uh, Mr. X, the telephone wires. We can't call nobody. That's right, Putsy. I was looking for you, yes, but... Well, I didn't expect to find you sitting in a plane. What are you doing up there? Oh, you might call it a test flight. Test flight in a closed hangar? Uh, you'd be surprised how much you can learn about a plane just doodling around. The fuel tanks are full, and there's a flight map in the pilot's compartment. Know anybody in Victoria, British Columbia? Victoria? That's the flight destination marked off on the map. Oh, Canada's a long way to go to report a murder to the police, isn't it? Yeah, but not too far to pick up guests for a dude ranch in Montana. <laughs> Either I'm very obtuse, darling, or, or you're being deliberately frustrated. <laughs> Ken! Watch it, Madeline. <laughs> Stay right there. Can you see him, Ken? No, he's gone. Do you think it was Sanders? Could be. Carrying a grudge against us for taking a ride together? A better guess is that he didn't want us to talk to Doris Crandall. Doris? Yeah, she's back. Coming in for a landing now. She has a passenger with her, Ken. She must have gone to Helena to pick him up. Recognize him? Should I? You met him once before the war. At an embassy ball in Budapest. Ken? Yeah. He's our old friend, Fedor Kolenda. But, but I don't get it, Mr. X. What's that no good spy Kalendo doing here anyways? I think he's come to meet some old friends, Putsy. Huh? Listen. Uh, the minute it's dark, take one of the ranch cars. Head down the road to Helena. Uh -huh. First telephone you come to... Put in a call for the chief and tell him Colenda's here. He'll know what it's about.
That's far enough, Thurston. Well, Miss Crandall, welcome home. Thanks. Any particular reason for being in my bunkhouse? You wouldn't come out on the landing strip to meet me, so I came here. Very thoughtful of you. Why the, uh, 45? I was also thoughtful enough to ask your friend, Kalenda, about you. Did you give me a good reference? Maybe you'd like to answer that, Kalenda. We are always glad to oblige an old friend. Ah. Aren't we, Mr. X? get myself mixed up in these things, I don't know. Shootings, killings, spies. Oh, I should have took my Uncle Ahmed's advice and married that rich dame in Vienna. So what if she did have to shave once a day? With a million bucks, I could afford a barber. Now I got to, I got to sneak out of here in the dark, maybe get shot at a couple of times, and all because Hello, I... Hello, wa- Footsie. Huh? Going somewhere? Oh, oh. It's only you, Miss Trent. Nice night out, huh? I asked you if you were going somewhere. Oh, yes, yes, sure. To get help before we all get bumped off out here. Maybe... Hey, what what are you doing with that gun? Nothing. If you change your mind and head for the airplane hangar. Otherwise, you might join Senor Rocas. I joined Senor Rocas, but he's dead. He... He... Oh, my... Any luck with those ropes, Putsy? Luck? <laughs> These things got me tied tighter than a bum. Yeah. Uh, what gives, Mr. X? What gives? Why we're all tied up in this aeroplane hangar? Why? Who's after us and for what? Smuggling enemy agents into the country is a profitable business these days. What's that got to do with that Madeline pulling a gun on me? Just protecting her vested interests, Putsy. Huh? She's the boss of the outfit. Oh, that's different. For a minute, I thought you said the boss of the outfit. That's what. That's why she had Sanders kill her boyfriend, Rokas. Oh. He tipped us off once and was going to do it again. When she tried getting him herself earlier, it didn't quite come off. But, but, but he said it was uh, target practice or something. A cover-up for her. When you love someone badly enough. Oh. But, but what about little Doris Crandall? How does she figure in all this? Would you like me to take over on that one, Ken? Mr. X. Hello, Madeline. You see, darling, Doris is a nice girl, though rather stupid. When the blizzards of two years ago nearly wiped her out, she was very grateful when I financed her. So you told her I was the one who killed Rokas. How long do you think you can keep fooling her, Madeline? Oh, just long enough for my next plane to arrive from Canada. It's due any minute, carrying one of the most valuable cargoes I've ever handled. I see then Doris will try to fly you and Putsy back to Helena in that plane. But unfortunately, it's going to crash. It can crash? Sanders tells me it can be done quite easily. He'll take the plane up with the three of you aboard, set the automatic pilot, and bail out. Oh, but, but, but we could get killed that way, even hurt, maybe. The plane from Canada is coming in now, Madeline. And Sanders has Doris outside. What about these two? Cut their ropes, Fedor, and take them out to the runway. Mm. As soon as the others disembark... See that they climb aboard. I'll hold a gun on them while you tie them up again. Very well, Madeleine. <clears throat> yeah, so you... You thought you could stop us from entering your country, Thurston. <laughs> what fools you are. <laughs> you know, someday you will learn that nothing... Nothing can prevent us from obtaining our objectives. Yeah. So... Stand over there. Sure. Anything to say? Ah. Now, for you, Putsy. Oh, yeah. Hurry, Fedor. The plane is landing. All right, Madeline, all right. There. On your feet, Putsy. Oh, okay, okay. I'm on my feet. Here, Fedor. Take the gun and get them out there quickly. Huh? You see them, Thurston? Ten of the finest espionage agents in the world. Gubachev, Madison, Ferran, Stryker... 
<laughs> it may take them time, but when they're through, there will not be a military secret left in this country. Fedor, they... huh? oh. there's something wrong there. What? Those men, they're not the ones we were bringing in. That's right, Madeline. All right, Chief, better take them. Chief? All right, all of you, stand where you are. You're under arrest. Arrest? No! Shoot them, Fedor! Shoot! Don't bother trying, Fedor! Oh! Look, look at Sanders. He's trying to run away. He's trying... Hey, what do you know? He didn't make it. Round him up, <laughs> men. Watch out for snipers. How about it, Ken? You okay? Yeah, yeah, th thanks, Chief. What about the plane from Canada? We waited until it got across the border. Then a couple of army jets forced it to land. You had your information down fat. Good. Oh, Chief, this is Madeleine Trent. She was operating the outfit. Yes, but apparently not quite smartly enough. How did you get that information out? Those planes in the hangars have shortwave radios, Madeline. Radios? I had forgotten. You forgot something else, too. Something that every American school kid knows and believes in. They say it every day. It might be a good idea if all of us said it every day. And meant it. It goes, I pledge allegiance to the flag. Our star, Herbert Marshall, will return in just a moment. Here's a word from RCA Victor. You know, when spring puts in its appearance, the ladies always seem to catch the men off guard. They've been busy for weeks planning their spring wardrobe, studying the new styles. And this year, there's one style everyone will want to study. It's the better-looking-in-every-way style of RCA Victor's magnificent new 17-inch television receiver, the Fairfield. With the Fairfield, you'll get television pictures which are exceptionally clear, bright, and steady. And you'll have RCA Victor's new picture pickup, which assures you of the best possible reception. If you've been looking for a television set that's going to look well in your home, here's your answer. The Fairfield's console cabinet is truly distinctive, and its beautiful doors close over the screen when your set's not in use. Go see your RCA Victor dealer. He'll be glad to show you the better-looking Fairfield. Now, here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. I think you ought to know that those in tonight's cast were Gene Tatum, Lucille Meredith, Will Wright, Sidney Miller, Bill Johnstone, Billy Hallop, and Lou Merrill. Next week, Mr. X tracks down an old friend of his who is tied up with one of the most nefarious crimes in modern history. Of course, when you use a word like nefarious, you also have to mention Leon Belasco, who will be along as Pagon Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. The Man Called X is a Saturday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is produced by J. Richard Kennedy, with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to listen tomorrow evening for The Big Show with Tallulah Bankhead and a great parade of stars, the Sunday night feature of NBC's All-Star Festival. And until next week, same time and station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. Hear Phil Regan's new show tomorrow. Now enjoy your hit parade on NBC. NBC.